Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Adam. How you doing? I appreciate you coming out here. Oh, it's good to see you. How you been? Not bad. Not bad. Cool. So, what's going on in your world? That was a great leg cross. We did it at the same time. Yeah. I liked it. It's perfectly timed. <laughs> man, I've been I've been working on that, trying to work on that Kansas film I told you about. Yeah. But that's kind of why I brought you out here to talk to you a little bit. It's kind of because I've really hit a wall with it. I don't know where to go next. I don't, I don't know what I'm, I've just hit a wall. So yeah. I needed some way to, to bounce some ideas off with. Well, it's sure. Cool. I mean, I'd be, I'd be happy to. I mean, I mean, what, what have you thought up so far? I've, I've got a lot, I've got a lot done, but I, I haven't started yet. Oh. So I, I don't, I, I don't really, that's, that's my problem is I don't, I have no idea what I'm, what I'm going to make. My, my struggle so far is being, I don't know, I have a story. What's my story? Well, how about this? What if you made it about what you're dealing with right now? Like you're, you're trying to come up with a story. What if you start out from this point and like make it a story about a story of you trying to come up with an idea. And as you come up with ideas, you can have it develop and build as you go. I mean, what would that be? I dig it. So like, like a Kansas movie inception, like, Exactly. A film about making a film about me filming a film. Exactly. It could it could happen like a scene like yes. this. Like it could happen or start like someplace just like here. I don't know. I mean, starting a film with two guys sitting around a campfire just seems super corny. Mm, I wouldn't say so. I you mean, think it'd be cool? Yeah. Yeah, so let's just, since I have you here, let's just walk through the entire yeah. thing. Yeah. Let's just brainstorm this all the way out. Bounce it off. So scene one, if this is a film about me making a film, I think this film has to start by grabbing their attention. We have to come out of the gate and be like, wham, bam, right. Kansas. Bring in something truly epic. Yes. So let's just, I think it's gonna start out with just epicness. We're just yeah. gonna, we're gonna slam some stuff in here, that stuff they've never seen. Yeah. So let's bring you in on this first one. I'm gonna throw together epic, epic footage, some some killer music, and I want you to step in in like full blown movie guy voice. We all have our perspective of Kansas. That view often lines up with common Kansas stereotypes. Whether you live across the country or you were born and raised here, it's likely that you haven't experienced the full beauty or magnificence of this great state. Yet Kansas isn't just a drive-through state. It's a beautiful oasis with its own unique appeal. Join us for a journey of epicness as we explore what makes Kansas special. Breaking stereotypes, exploring the natural beauty Trekking through the Great Plains. This is Kansas. So I liked the epic, right? But I think I think we need to make sure we we give a shout out to the the OG Kansas. You know, we have some of the, if not the biggest sections of natural tall grass prairie left in the world. Um, and that's hmm. incredible, something we should celebrate. So maybe we can kind of step back to almost like what you talked about, a, a documentary style here. Hmm. Beautiful tall grass prairie, bison, some of the right. classic stuff. 
and you can just jump in with some some facts, some history. Yeah, so more of a, a standard documentary, historical, but not too much, you know, maybe just a little clip yep. here and there, just to give you a taste of what Kansas is in more of a traditional sense. I like it. Cool. Kansas is situated on the American Great Plains. It became the 34th state on January 29th, 1861. Over 70 species of grasses can be identified in the Flint Hills. Many species of tall grass can reach heights of four to seven feet. Given the right growing conditions and location, reaching their full height in September and October. Fire is a fundamental part of the tall grass prairie ecosystem, adapted for use by both the native peoples of the Flint Hills and by European and American settlers. Fire burns away old growth and gives tall grass prairie plants greater access to sunshine and moisture. Tall grass prairie once covered 170 million acres of North America, but within a generation, most of it has been transformed into farmland. Today, less than 4% remains intact, mostly in the Kansas Flint Hills. I dig that. That was nice. That was a nice move from epic to informational. Um, yeah. But, but then where? Well, I mean, like, it's so far, it's kind of like a deluxe gourmet buffet of, you know, prime visual storytelling. But I think people really want to know you. Maybe more like a vlog style, like, you know, YouTube is super big and social media is super big and like it give you a different perspective of like yeah, you. Yeah, so just jump in there with a with yeah. like a selfie stick, right? Exactly. And just selfie stick for a while. That's right. Just your face. People would love I that. I mean, can you imagine just this being on big screen? Absolutely. I think you could get an Emmy. Man, I just get jitters just thinking about it right now. <clears throat> All right, so just got done shooting some crazy legit drone stuff. I was gonna take a little video here and let you follow me through. I'm about to go down what's known as Frying Pan Canyon out here. You can see we're about to, to enter it here. Super excited about this. I haven't actually been to this canyon yet. I'm assuming I'm probably one of the first to be here. Only a few people have made it this far. Um, you might be wondering, well, it's, why is it called Frying Pan Canyon? Um, it's a really interesting story. Um, it goes back into the late 1750s, I believe. And there was a pioneer woman that got trapped here because she fell off of the um, covered wagon. And all she had with her was a frying pan. And it took, this was while they were on the Oregon Trail, and it took her team quite a while to realize that she was gone and then to come back for her. Here, I'll kind of show you again here, this really cool place. Anyways, all she had with her was a frying pan, and she used that to um, kill a few deer and then cook them in it. Um, and then she fashioned some sort of shelter out of it. It was either a very large frying pan or a very small woman. Um, history didn't record that, so we don't know for sure. But it's an interesting story and just a cool place, you know, to walk in those footsteps of history out here. And it's also just super beautiful. Hey guys, I'm out here at um, Elk City Lake hiking. The trail out here, the main trail, it's about a 15 mile trail. And this is gorgeous. Just every, every mile of it, it's incredible. And you know, I'm getting all the footage I can, but I'll be honest, this is one of my most favorite locations. 
but it's also proving to be one of the hardest to film. And I don't know why, it's just very difficult to capture the full, just grandness of this place. I don't know if you can see it in this footage. There are two very large birds that keep swarming around me. And of course, when I start shooting, they fly away. But they keep swarming around my head. Um, not really close, but kind of close. I'm pretty sure that means they've accepted me as part of their pack, which is really cool. Um, I've always wanted to be a part of a bird pack. Um, so that's exciting. Neat thing that happened today for sure. You know, I've known, ran into quite a few people that have hiked this place. And to a person. Hey, have you ever been to Elk City? Yep. What'd you think? It was incredible. And the next word, every single person, the next thing they say, doesn't feel like you're in Kansas. And guys, that's kind of what we're, we're leaning into here, right? That's what we're trying to disprove. This is Kansas. It's always been here. We just haven't loved on it enough. I'm out here in a Quivera uh, Wildlife Refuge wetlands. One of a couple massive wetlands we have here in Kansas. Um, besides it being super beautiful and super cool, just in general, found a lot of birds. Um, came out here last year and um, there's a huge population of bald eagles out here. But can I just say, besides the beauty, how much I appreciate um, places that are named appropriately. Uh, these are wetlands and there is just a lot of water out here. I appreciate well-named locations. It makes sense to me and I like a world that makes sense. But you just need to get out here, hike it. Even the first mile is unbelievable. I just advise doing it on a day that's not 95 degrees and 100% humidity is brutal. Yeah, the close up Adam thing. I, I, I think there's something there. I mean, I mean, it was. It's you. It was probably the most handsome section of this entire film. Right. Yeah. But, but I don't necessarily have the good looks that you have, but maybe I could render my voice of some use to your project. Yeah. What if we, what if we let you flex in this next section? I like it. So, I don't, what are some different things we can do here, right? I'll, I'll just throw in some film. Okay. I'll just throw in some footage. Yeah. And just let you have some fun. Yeah. So what are some different characters you could bring into this? Well, I mean, you could have good old Dave from Australia. It's great. You know, there's nothing like sitting out in the outback. Just a nice, nice Aussie in the, in the wonderful flatlands of Kansas. You know, uh, that, that could be a possibility. I like it. What else? Uh, you know, you could have California, man. Love it. It's totally dig it here. Man, it's so right. Let's roll with California guy in Kansas. Okay. Sweet. Hi, my name is Tyler Andrews. And when I told my friends I was moving from Cali to Kansas, they thought I was crazy. <laughs> and they'd be right. But certainly not because I decided to move here. Growing up, I was always told that Kansas was boring and that I should avoid it at all cost. My friends would say, it's scientifically proven that it's flatter than a pancake, bruh. Uh, well, I don't know much about science, but I know I'm scientifically way more happy here in 
Kansas. Kansas is legit, and I love the natural beauty that it has. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I can't surf, but look at all the sick churf. <laughs> Kansas is radical. I like California guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was a cool dude. What if we, what if we, what if we jump from that? Okay. Completely opposite direction. Now. What if we go classy? You got, mm. What do you got in that in that range? Yeah, my perhaps just your average British man, who just loves life, loves Kansas. My name is Benjamin Williamson. There's no place quite like Kansas, and as an author, I love to visit here. The green inviting prairies and trees leave me feeling like I'm home. Although I do miss my beautiful bride-to-be, Eliza Pudding too. I can't say that I care for her last name, and that's why I'm giving her mine. <clears throat> Anywho, I love to explore, and Kansas always seems to offer something new every time I come to visit here. It is my sincere hope in my journeys that I'll be able to share the unique attraction I hold to this place in my new book. Kansas. A state of mind, peace, and tranquility. So, I noticed you're wearing goggles. Yeah, I just got this new app. It's called Virtual Fire Pit. And it's like super immersive, man. It feels like I can feel the warmth. It's, it's amazing. You, you do know you're sitting in front of a fire, right? I know, I was just kidding. <laughs> I know that. Hmm. No, man, these are my these are my FPV goggles, right? And so, um, Ian. Yes. So, these are what I wear for specific drones when I get uh, a certain type of footage. You know, I get to see what the drone sees from inside here. Um, what if we did just like a whole section of that, right? Just like crazy diving loops through stuff, under stuff, over stuff, like. Like, believe it or not, Kansas has some pretty crazy cliffs. What if we did some cliff diving, stuff like that? Yeah. Just that... some, let's, let's bring this out of, let's just, let's like break out some techno, get some beats going, and just totally shift this mood. I like it. Awesome. Sounds pretty cool. Well, I want to go back to my virtual fire pit.
Like, uh, mm, that you all right? A, that was a little too much for me, man. The talk about motion, man. It was pretty cool, right? Epic. Epic. Yeah, that was pretty mm. cool. Yeah. So, so maybe we should slow the next one down. Give mm. you a break. Sure. <laughs> Honestly, man, I mean, I've I've hit all the stuff I want to. I feel like I've said what I need to. I've shown what I need to. So now we just we just end it. You know, I've been in this a lot as voiceover guy. I, I think the last one needs to be you. So we just end it with with beautiful Kansas, Adam's words, and Adam's voice. Yeah. I've been filming Kansas stuff for quite a while already. I've been pretty obsessed with Kansas for a while, but there was still even a part of me that that still viewed Kansas as a wheat field sunflower state. But since really starting this film and doing nothing but surrounding myself with the most epic and beautiful parts of Kansas, it's been shocking to me how much my mentality has changed. At this point, I honestly can say there's just not even a small piece of me that views Kansas as that wheat field sunflower steak. There's just so much more to this place to be labeled as that. When I started, I had a list of 40 or 50 places I wanted to get to, most of which I hadn't ever been to. But I just honestly ran out of time. This film maybe encompasses about 20 of those spots. And there is just so much more to still see and explore. There's so many incredibly unique places in this state. Now I challenge you, walk, hike, explore some of the incredible places here and join me in getting out where the buffalo roam.